Welcome once again to our series, Marriage God's Way. I am Mary Beth Maestri. I'd like to review a little about what we talked about last week so you can get an idea for when we continue on. So let me go through some of these points. Last week we heard that the sin of Adam and Eve had broken our connecting link with God. And so we constantly struggle with right and wrong. But God took over a debt man, we all of us, could never repay. Through his son's death on the cross, he paid the price for each and every one of us. So based on the price God paid for you and I, it makes us priceless. I want you to think about that. We are priceless through the death and resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ. But we don't take all of this for granted, or maybe we do. We also have a role to play in this salvation. God's gift of salvation translates into our gift of forgiveness through a personal relationship with Jesus, which really is the beginning of holiness. We'll talk more on forgiveness later on in the show. The sacrament of baptism, we spoke about that. This is our first act of faith in response to God's call to holiness. Through the Holy Spirit, we become a new person in Christ and also a member of God's family, the church. Two things, a, a new person in Christ and a member of his family. We then started to look at marriage today and how the modern world teaches us to always look out for number one, since no one else will. It promotes individuality and personal fulfillment as our highest priority for ourselves and in our marriage. Quote, living married, but thinking single. Listen to that again. Living married, but thinking single. And we heard how we have been trained for this from an early age. Let us now continue on our series and I'd like to welcome back Maureen and Stanley Ermuff, who's going to be with us to help us to understand more of what this is all about. Thanks for being here. And Maureen, I'd like you to go through that verse. We, said, we had it last week, last week, last session. Uh, I think it's taken from Romans. Huh? Mm -hmm. Let's go back again, because that's such a powerful verse. Yes, it is very powerful. Um, it says, Romans 12, 2, Do not conform yourself to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. Okay, um, there are several words in here that I think both Stanley and I would probably want to Jump out at you. Yeah, at <laughs> us, yeah. And one of the things that jump out at me immediately is, well, of course, the word, it says, do not conform yourself to this world. It's like a warning mm -hmm. that not to conform, your, conform ourselves to this world, but be transformed. There has to be a transformation, a change in us. Mm -hmm. Be transformed by the renewal of your mind. So we, are, we will be transformed, how? By the renewal of our mind. As everything starts in the mind. There's a verse that says, as a man, as a person, thinketh, so is he. Mm -hmm. And we could see that, you know, whatever goes into the mind becomes our attitudes, our form, and then, um, then our actions, our behaviors. But it starts here. It starts from in the, in the mind. What goes into the mind becomes who we are. So I think we got to be very careful what we put into our mind, which brings me to um, another beautiful verse, Philippians 4, 8, which says, um, whatever things that are true, 
whatever things that are noble, whatever things that are just, whatever things that are pure, whatever things that are lovely, meditate on these things. It says meditate. We got to really, really make it a part of us. Use the mind. Through the mind mm -hmm. and meditate. It reaches our heart and then it comes out of us from the abundance of the heart. So, um, but the, you know, we hear these things and we don't meditate and we just hear it and it, oh, that sounds good. And it just goes through one ear, from one ear to the other. So um, all these things in Philippians 4, um, 4, 8, things that are true, things that are noble, things that are just, that are pure, things that are lovely. These are the things that we should be meditating on, focusing on. Um, there's a lot more, Sunny. You want to say something? There's a whole sure. uh, show. Sure. Yeah, he sure. could add to that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, St. Paul in Romans 12, 2 is essentially saying we have to change the way we think. <laughs> yep. It's, mm -hmm. it's, I mean, that's it. And the lovely thing is that when he says that, the criteria, the measurement he gives us, in terms of what we change to is not some other worldly system or some other worldly advice. He goes straight that you may discern what is the will of God. Now the same God here represented by Jesus Christ is probably one of the only persons that says I came that you may have joy that's a word we don't even hear anymore. <laughs> you were saying earlier, you know, you don't hear about courtship anymore. Who talks about joy? You know, we, we, we happen to settle for happiness, and that's becoming kind, even kind of losing <laughs> minimum joy. You know, it's, it's the ultimate. You know, what is good and pleasing and perfect? And then Philippians. Where did you read from Philippians? Right here. All right, Philippians. You know, li listen to the characteristics, the, 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 the context, the environment. Things that are true, things that are noble, things that are just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely. I mean, those are the characteristics we would like to be able to wake up to every day and experience. So he's talking about the quality of life, and therefore in the quality of marriage, you know, we have, to, we have to somehow reconcile with this bad word, holy. Because we get all kind of wrong, you know, ideas when we think about holy. But last week we mentioned, just like on a human level, the healthiest body is what would be most delightful on a human level. No, no headache, no ache, no pain in our limbs. You know, there's an equivalent in spirituality for holy. Holy is the perfect spirit as healthy is the perfect human existence, the perfect body, the perfect biology, whatever you want to call it. That's, you know, and that, that's what it is. And so much so that Jesus could talk about joy. <laughs> Help me, you know. And these are things we, we have to buy into. I mean, we could choose any life we want. To say things about to transform. To right. We have to change, change the way we think mm -hmm. into believing that, hey, wait a minute, all of this is doable and all of this is being presented to us as blessings, not as chores, you know, not as handcuff or lack of freedom. This is all Blessing. This is why St. Paul, and this, this verse is so powerful in my opinion. It's, it starts there, and you know, uh, John the Baptist said the same thing. I, I've read that the word repent means the same as change the way you think. That's what <laughs> repent means. We're, we're pursuing the same things. No, no, change the way you think and pursue the good things because they are wholesome for your life. Yeah. Okay, but that must, that's hard to do because Maureen, let's move on now because we, you mentioned this last week but, and we want to continue into it. I want to bring it back in. We were trained from very young 
not to think, not to be transformed, or if transformed, mm -hmm. we're being transformed by the modern world, mm -hmm. but from very young. Right. But their plan is not according to God's plan. I don't know where that plan came from, but go ahead. Let's, yeah, let's, let's, this, let's, this verse also talks about so you know so that you may discern what is the will of god what is now, the, the world's will. plan is not god's plan uh -huh. so we need to discern discern is, is to know what what is right what is wrong what is evil what is good, good. nowadays we don't know to what is right what is wrong mm -hmm. what is evil you know everything is is relative change it, it, upside yeah, down yeah, yeah, yeah it's upside it's, down it's individualism and relativism yes. yeah it's, it's all about me mm -hmm. And there's no absolute truth. It's whatever I subscribe to is good. That's, so, so that's we, insanity. Really. So we need to know the will of God. And how do we know the will of God? Right here. Yeah. Through scripture. Because God has never come down. I've never heard God's voice. But this is where I get to know what God says. What, what right. God is saying about life, about how we should live. Not just about marriage, well, about yes. everything. Oh, life. No, no. About, about life. life is bigger <laughs> than, marriage. Than, marriage. than marriage. I yeah. mean, that, that's not to put down that, marriage, yeah. mm -hmm. but it that's so where it true. starts. The, the commandments are not addressed to married to people. people. Uh -huh. They're addressed to everyone. And if we get that right, then marriage becomes much easier because we're starting to see now through mm -hmm. God's, God's eyes, eyes, from God's perspective. Yeah. So, but he revealed himself through Jesus Christ as well. Don't forget. Oh that. yes, oh, yeah, 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 yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. But in, yeah, um, so so we need to we need to to read and meditate <laughs> and listen and ponder on 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 God's words and Jesus' words. And I remember what Saint um, Saint Saint Jerome says. He said, "Ignorance of Scripture." is ignorance of Christ. So we don't know what Christ is saying unless we get into this book and we delve in and we learn through Jesus' word, mm -hmm. words in the New Testament, Jesus, through the New Testament, is in all the Gospels, mm -hmm. Jesus tells us right and wrong, what's good, what's going to give us this abundant joy, not just a little bit of joy, but abund I came so that you may have abundant joy. So you know, so it's it's very it's very important. Um, like we said, the modern world is 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 telling us all sorts of things through um, that sound good media. Uh huh. Oh, that sounds God. very good. That that's the and thing. That's the catch. That's, that's the catch. catch. That's the yeah. devil. That's the deception. That, that, the deception. That's the trickery. Mm -hmm. That's the lies. Mm -hmm. And those those are the things that make me cringe because mm -hmm. they sound so good. good, and we all buy into it. Mm -hmm. Cause it sounds so good. Mm, but unlegitimate, big word. Unlegitimate. So, you know, I, just, I got to look after me too, but sure. I'm not. Yeah. That's right. yeah. And that's legitimate. Yeah. Right. Um, I, I see a sentence here I'd like to add to it. Mm -hmm. It says, independent thinking, getting ahead, career goals, and personal fulfillment, these are all high priority. And it sounds so good sounds because so we good. were doing this before marriage. You know, like education and on to a career. Mm. So we were all going that way, down that road anyway. There's, then it says, investing on in our marriage then becomes low priority. Yeah. Right. Because all these other things, mm -hmm. we, which we're accustomed to doing before we got into marriage, have been high priority. Mm -hmm. Marriage yeah. is low priority. And loving and being loved is taken for granted. I right. I just it's kind of like we've made a step, we've been to the altar. Mm -hmm. This love thing is automatic now, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a given now. Uh -huh. You know. Um, you sign the papers. Sign yeah. the paper. So, and after it's... so the marriage is really intended to help me be a better me mm -hmm. and help Maureen be a better Maureen. Um, regardless of the expense to the marriage, regardless of the expense to the relationship. And bear in mind, again, we're not talking about that means the world is saying you could go out and have another sweet heart mm -hmm. or, or whatever. It's, you know, the Just world the never basics. says that. Uh -huh. The world never says, you know, my intent is for you to divorce. Never. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It says, look after yourself. The whole individualism thing and, and define what's right for you, regardless of what is out there or whatever absolute truth. And those are the things that will eventually take us in one direction. Divorce and separation. That's right. Yeah, and the statistics show what more than 51% of marriages end up in divorce 
including amongst Christians. That uh -huh. means half of us are getting it wrong, you know. Yes. <laughs> and I don't know if this is a, just a statistic for United States or whatever it is, but if it goes beyond, you could bank on a much higher percentage. Percentage. It is yeah. a little higher. Yeah. I'm sure we fall right into that category. Just from us, say, we, we can think about what we see around us, and we fall yeah. into that category. That, so that, that definitely. So if the if the modern world's ideas are so good, then why this high number of divorce? Exactly. You know. Yeah. Back, it's right back to the thinking. Right. And and I'm trying to see, see all of this together. So who came? You know, we we know we have God's plans. We, we we read biblical verses every so often to you. I mean, you have the whole Bible to go look at, especially the the New Testament. Huh? Like we said, all the Gospels. You can even get a Bible for the Gospels highlighted in red or what different color, whatever color. Usually it's red of all Jesus's words. And then on top of that, you have Saint Paul with all his. Yeah, it pays, but then, but, yeah, explanations and everything. Uh, uh, else, Romans, so. Corinthians, yeah. Philippians, all the people mm. he writes to in that mm. area. And all he does is build up on what Jesus has said yeah. in the Gospels. Mm. And elaborate and break down so we breaks can understand. That, that we can understand and it. apply. Mm. This is the thing. A lot of times we hear laugh the thing and say, well, how do I apply that? Mm. I'm the clue. <laughs> and after we, we just forget it. We don't we don't even get into it because but Saint Paul tells us in the, the nitty gritty of how to love. I mean how to how to do the things that mm. God tells us. Okay, and, and we, we're gonna uh, stop there and continue on. But like you said, the marriage just gets goes lower and lower. You just you hardly have time for each other. But every once in a while, like I see here, you, you, you boost it up with the birthday <laughs> occasion, the anniversary, mm. the once a year trip. I mean, and you boast about mm. that, you know, oh, look what I got for my birthday or, you know, anniversary I got, you know, whatever, this, this, and this, mm -hmm. or the trip we're going off to, yeah. you know. And then yeah. after that, it's right back to the marriage again, mm. of back to the, in the, the individuality of yeah. the marriage. Okay, viewers, we'll stop there. Interesting, isn't it? We'll continue when we come back. Years ago, when I started acting, modeling, and singing in Mexico, my Catholic faith was not the center of my life. It took me many years to discover that success, fame, money, and all the pleasures of the world were not going to fulfill me. I got to a point in my life where I thought I had everything, but I realized something was missing. Thankfully, I began a faith journey that brought me back to God and the home to the Catholic Church. You can too. Discover more at catholicscomehome.com. Okay, we'll continue on now. But listen to that word I said in the beginning, huh? a little um, phrase. Uh, living married, but thinking single. And this is how most of us live. This is the life we've been trained into, like Maureen said. But at the end of the day, Maureen, this life is an exhausting life, isn't it? But yes, it is, because... These things take up our, our time and energy and focus. Mm -hmm. And therefore, at the end of the day, when we have spent ourselves in all these other... And, and sometimes the things that we do are, are yeah. important. They yes. are necessary. Mm -hmm. But like we keep saying, it's when we don't have that balance, when we put these things ahead of our relationship. That is when the trouble comes in. Mm -hmm. And it, it's... Um, Many a husband, many a wife, at the end of the day, you, you only have so much energy. And um, therefore, you, you just do your own thing, you know. Um, for instance, I, I, there are situations where I think that a, a husband may even encourage his wife to maybe get involved, say, in church activities. No, um, you do your own thing. You go and you um, take care of the children and you... Um, go shopping and you um, would do all the things that you could do in church, you know, all the, all the prayer meetings and all the this and that. And therefore, you know, he has time to just sit 
and chill and she doesn't need to engage because he's, he, he's tired. And when she comes home, she's exhausted too because yeah. mm -hmm. she has spent herself on, on all these other things. But, but Which, just rem rem lots of this, 50, I mean, a lot bigger part is a woman with a career as well, huh? So well, she's out could, to... And, uh, it, could uh, also be, it could also be the woman at home who, who yes. exhausts herself just cleaning and washing and like me. <laughs> and, 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 and doing both, all, the, all, the, all this stuff, you know, and um, instead of leave, leave things, you know, you have to have a clean, clean kitchen at night. Can't go to bed unless the, the, the kitchen is completely clean. Uh -huh. And there, my husband is there waiting in bed for me while I'm cleaning, you know, kind of thing. You know, I, I think that we, we, we need to um, really put our priorities in the right place because mm -hmm. we could really make all these other things which are necessary. I like oh, a clean yeah. house. Sunny loves a clean house. But when we exaggerated to the to the um, expense of a relationship. Mm -hmm. So in each, each, I think each couple need to examine what am I doing that is exhausting me, making me, distracting me from entering into this intimate relationship that we so much desire, yep. we so much want, mm -hmm. no? Yeah, and, and in kind of like, like a funny way, God tests us with regard to how serious we are about making him our priority. And after, after God as our priority, it's, it's the wife, it's, it's the spouse, mm -hmm. and then the children and the, you know, the broader um, neighborhood and community. But I, they, I, I support a guy in tennis. I've been supporting him since 2010. By support, I mean I pray for him literally every day, sometimes more than once a day if he's playing. Mm -hmm. And God, and then, you know, I'm going on for my prayers now early in the morning, and he happens to be playing. And God says, um, <clears throat> so are you going to give tennis the priority, or are you going to give me? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and you would love to give tennis. And I'm saying, it, it's only oh, there we go. tennis, God. <laughs> and it's kind of like, you no. Know, you cover him with my help, God's help, and you give me the priority. Mm -hmm. And I do. You know, invariably the guy wins anyway because I'm praying for him. But he because you prayed for him. Oh, I love so that. Really, because you could see sometimes how he's struggling. And I say, you know, you don't deserve to win this match. <laughs> but I pray and he wins. I, I'm not saying it's that. I'm sure a lot of other people uh, are. Pray, but the thing is, this still with work. Uh -huh. You know, sometimes it's, it's praying and you have to go to work. You know, I have a little bit of flexi flexibility because it's, it's my firm. But God would say, um, so this is going to take about half an hour. Are, are you prepared to give me that half hour over running down to work, going, you know, going to work? And I started to think about it, and God said, you, you remember how many times I have made you become aware of things you don't even have to do and saved you hours mm -hmm. or prevented something that would have been a challenge from happening I'm only asking for half an hour. And, 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 you know, you have to make up your mind then, again, for your own benefit, uh, to say, no, God, you are my priority. And you do it. And you go into your work or, or whatever with that absolute confidence that whatever happens, you will see me through. Mm -hmm. And it always happens. So it's, again, going right back to St. Paul, we have to change the way we think. The gratification of watching a guy win a tennis match. You know, really? That, that's a real deal? No, no, no. The gratification of spending time with God and putting him in God's control makes much more sense. But we got to change the way we think. We got to buy into that and believe it and implement it. That's part of the transformation. Huh? Because you said a mouthful right there when you said, God, then my spouse. Yeah. Usually there's no God in this picture. Yeah. So there's no, you know, we sp sp spoke about this personal relationship. We did a lot of that on the last two, two sessions <laughs> we've had. And we have to continue talking about it because on your own, trying to have this personal relationship with your wife, it's not, it, you're still booking right. because you're not understanding this relationship you have mm -hmm. with God until you can get that, yeah. that straight. This is not going to work. Yeah. This will continue into the, the worldly way. Mm -hmm. eh? And it doesn't yes. work because I have my agenda mm -hmm. and Maureen has 
prioritize them. So when we're trying to work that out, whose agenda is going to be compromised? <laughs> okay, that's right. <laughs> you know, well, when we go to God, I mean, bearing in mind, I think it's intimacy in marriage. I'm talking about bedroom intimacy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, God-centered intimacy, I really believe it's our sacramental sign. Mm-hmm. You know, because you won't develop that unless you have a really intimate relationship with God himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Mm-hmm. But when we have that relationship, God is saying, no, it's not about your agenda because this is not really pleasing, not only to your wife, maybe to a lot of people, they just don't tell you, <laughs> and vice versa. And then you come with a much more clear and pure objective, pure in the wholesome sense, not pure walking around holy, holy, mm-hmm. but pure in the most you know, healthy spiritual sense, as we would refer to the most healthy, you know, bodily sense. So it makes sense and say, all right, this is what I bring to my relationship. Because not one of us is perfect. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, and both of us have to be able to extend grace yeah. to each other. So, so those words we're all talking now about God and re- relationship with God and grace and the word holiness, like you said, people see it as a bad word, yeah, you know, threatening. but it, but it's the only thing. Mm. Once we start f- following Jesus, like I said in our baptism, mm. that's where holiness begins in that little three-week baby. They're not seeing it as such, but through that gift, the sacramental gift of baptism, the the holiness is starting. It will, you know, we add on to it through communion and confirmation mm. and everything else, but but we have to. Because you can't see it, it's hard to talk about this holiness. Yeah. But, but as we continue on, you'll understand why we call it holiness, because it's such a transformation from what the world has to offer. Mm-hmm. There's another one you, we talk about here, this um, emotions, the, the, mo- the emotional neglect, or through, talk to me about that one there, that... Um, emotional infidelity, infidelity. if you Right, like. uh-huh. Right. Yes, we, we might think that, um, Infidelity is just um, being unfaithful with somebody else, yes. right? Mm-hmm. But I do believe that when we ignore each other, we, we're not engaged and we're not intimate, we, we refer to it as emotional infidelity. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. You know, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that speaks volumes to me, you know? It, it does because you're shutting out the other person or... Like we, I mentioned last week, last time about the, the ships passing in the night, a march like that, you know, we just pass each other and that sort of thing. And, um, and, and that is, that's a very lonely place to be. I, I, um, when we experience that in our marriage, um, it, it's, 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 very, it's very lonely. Mm-hmm. And Stanley could be in the same house with me, you know, and we're not connecting, we're not engaging, and it's, it's, I would go up in my room and I just feel so lonely, you know. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. And, and men like intimacy as well. Yeah. Could I say that? Men <laughs> love intimacy. I'm not talking about bedroom. Uh-huh. Men thrive on intimacy. Yeah. And therefore, the same thing the wife may complain about. Men are not complainers, huh? mm-hmm. but they suffer because of this lack of intimacy. Because that's the way God did us, yes. really. Uh-huh. God never said, yes, well, I give you a serious dose of intimacy or oh, the need for intimacy because you're a woman and a much less dose for it because, but no, 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 no. <laughs> we, we all need intimacy. We all need intimacy. You see what I'm saying? And we saw it when Adam saw Eve. Yeah. After having all the animals mm-hmm. and everything in mm-hmm. the garden, mm-hmm. he saw Eve and he just, I could imagine the sigh. Huh? At last, or whatever else, the expression is face. At last, bone Mm. of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Mm -hmm. So yes, men crave it too. Absolutely. But they they put on this bold front and figure, oh well, (sighs) I'll let TV take care of that. (laughs) Well, no, you know, this is a a poor, the TV is a poor substitute, guys. (laughs) I'm sorry, ladies. The TV is a poor Poor substitute. substitute. Okay. And I'm, again, not necessarily talking about bedroom. And, you know, bedroom and intimacy will invariably follow from intimacy outside the bedroom. Outside, yeah. But that's not, that's not what is on the guy's mind. The guy just needs to feel love as much as a woman. Yeah. As crazy as that song. Oh, I hope that song's manly rather than <laughs> otherwise. But it is, if it we is? admit it. Oh, it definitely. Is. And I think every man would admit that. Every man. I every think so. I think sure, so. admit it now. Yeah. It's God-given. Yeah. yeah. 
But um, but we got to work it, you know. Oh sure. Uh -huh. Yeah. The, the this priest says, "What we desire most in life is intimacy, mm -hmm. and what we fear most in life is intimacy." Intimacy, sure. And and it's amazing. That's what we we accomplish in courtship, which is why we choose to get married. It's it's personal love, you know. We that I would like to spend my life with him or her. Um, and after marriage, it's out the door, out the window. <laughs> it's, it's insane, really, when we think about it. Um, we're speaking about it right here, but the word, uh, it, it's a sacramental union. Mm. Let's bring that word in. We spoke about baptism being a sacrament. I think we're going to come to it later mm -hmm. on in the series. But just to yeah. bring it up here, as part of the other mm. spiritual or abstract word we mm. seem to be talking about, to, to, to get to do, to transform, like uh, St. Paul says, mm. it's, we have that sacrament of matrimony, seeing it that's going to provide the graces to do these things that we're, we're yeah. saying that the world is saying, man, what's the, what, what are you talking about? I'm sure viewers, all of you are looking at us, I, I still look at, with question marks in your head. We, we'll, we'll explain more as the series continues on. Because like we said, we've been trained. We've been trained to look at that individuality, to go for your career, to do this, and then it's, it's like a list of to-do things. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's this, this marriage, mm -hmm. two children, yeah. the car and the house, you know, and just... And in the process, mm -hmm. enjoy an exciting marriage. <laughs> <laughs> It's impossible. That's the oh, lie. That's oh, the lie. That, that's, yeah. that's, that's the right. lie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And and if you're truthful, I mean, with your if you're sincere and are listening well to this, you know you can relate. That at the end of the day, you're just ex as exhausted as everyone else. Huh? We we have to. We can admit it. Yeah. We can admit it, and not willing to go that little inch, uh, you know, a little half, mm. not that half, just inch, <laughs> that's a correct word, inch well, further yeah. into the marriage of not wanting to yeah, do that's, something That's else. why we need God so much, because mm -hmm. you mentioned the sacrament just now, the sacrament yeah. gives us grace, mm -hmm. and grace is God's help. There's a, there's a new program out that we just can't wait to, to put out, it's called the Vertical Marriage. Vertical, oh, vertical marriage, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. You know, and that just just keeps it just says exactly what we've been saying over and over. You know, mm -hmm. without God's help, without God's grace, all we're talking about is impossible. Mm -hmm. Well, human wisdom. Yeah, that's what we're saying. You know, mm -hmm. and um, you know, we, we you know this this book that came out, the Five Love Languages, which okay. is good for a human relationship, Japan. but it's not a supplement. Mm -hmm. It's not a substitute for that vertical. That vertical. And this, this girl that was sharing on this, it says, so she's telling her friend, she just discovered this book with five love languages, and the friend says, God has one love language. <laughs> Obedience. Go. Oh my, oh my, okay, okay. let's well, start there. That's what it's all about, really. But again, obedience in following what makes, what is good for us. That's good for us. It's not obedience in following what's good for God. God doesn't need any one of us. We can't add an iota to Godness. Mm -hmm. God is total, but it's what's good for us. We have to learn to obey. And again, bad word, huh? Mm -hmm. So, okay, uh, we see that we know what we're following. Everything we're picking out is taken from the Bible, from Jesus' God's way first and then into Jesus' yeah. the New Testament. We, we call the Bible the marriage manual, Yes, the marriage blueprint, mm -hmm. you know, so. Mm -hmm. So you hear that, there. the marriage manual, the marriage blueprint. I wonder where the manual or the blueprint <laughs> came up for the, what the modern world is following today. You know, think, I mean, sure it's trial and error. It's lots of books. I'm sure it's shelves and shelves of books of the number one, putting me first. I mean, you can find, you go down in the aisles of, of libraries or, or books, bookstores. Yeah, I was and, thinking it probably came from people who have drifted away from, from, from God's word. Yes. They don't know it. Or, or ignorance, just plain. It ignorance. essentially comes right from the devil in the garden. <laughs> there we if, go. It's That's all about you, right honey. From the uh -huh. Forget about this God. He simply does not want you to be as godly as him. Mm -hmm. In fact, I, I was... But that's where it starts. And then it becomes very sophisticatedly 
presented and deceptively exercised. And, and you know, we, we are falling in the trap. It's are. not like because we are talking biblical things. So well, we know that from this. <laughs> you know, hello, we've been there many times, made the same mistakes. Mm-hmm. Because it's very deceiving. Yes. You know, and it, it sounds, sounds good. good. And the thing is it this, we're not good. getting the contrary teaching, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. This is why St. Paul goes right back and says, you know what the contrary is? The will of God. Mm-hmm. Not this otherworldly idea or whatever. It's the will of God. <laughs> Forget yeah. the world. The answer is the will of God. That is pleasing and pleasurable and everything else. That's okay, it. let's stop there. It's the will of God. That's what we're going to leave you with till we come back again. Um, but think about that. The will of God. This is what he, he chose. He did. He made marriage. No one else made marriage. We didn't come up with the idea. Mm. Just like we never came up with the idea of sex. You know, right. he did. Right? Yeah, he did. <laughs> he did. Yeah, absolutely. So, Read that he did. <laughs> so he, he knew. He knew you men. <laughs> and women. And women. <laughs> Not to mention. We like it too. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll see me back. Years ago, when I started acting, modeling, and singing in Mexico, my Catholic faith was not the center of my life. It took me many years to discover that success, fame, money, and all the pleasures of the world were not going to fulfill me. I got to a point in my life where I thought I had everything, but I realized something was missing. Thankfully, I began a faith journey that brought me back to God and the home to the Catholic Church. You can too. Discover more at catholicscomehome.com. Okay, let's continue. Interesting, isn't it? I'm finding it very, very interesting. Um, we had spoken, well, we're speaking on both sides, the world's view and God's view. So you're going to have to, like St. Paul said, tra- conform, conform uh, or transform yourselves accordingly. Or the truth is, you can stay as you are. And it all depends on the happiness you feel you're getting or the, the individual satisfaction you're getting decision you'll have to make. But we're seeing here how God has planned this marriage. We didn't make marriage. We, God had a perfect plan. We decided we could do it better. And so that's, I think that's the answer. Modern world's answer is, God, we can do it better. Mm -hmm. So we spoke already about divorce because we can do it better, remember, but yet 50% or more Christians including, Catholic Christians included, are divorcing, separating, whatever, you know, just, and, and these are some of the, the reasons, I, and I'd like to read out some of them to you. It says, um, why do many wives and husbands feel lonely and unfulfilled? You touched on that. You spoke about it earlier. Why do they lack intimacy, lose interest, and grow indifferent? Why are they convinced their marriage was a mistake, that there's no more love in the relationship, that their spouse is the root cause of their frustration, and that the only solution is to be with someone else. Well, do you think the only solution is to be with someone else if we're two opposite people coming from different directions? There's someone else has his own baggage. You spoke of baggage. Mm-hmm. You know, in, in this already, there's baggage. The next, someone comes with their baggage also. Mm-hmm. Maybe you're, you're more mature now and you can <laughs> help, help them lighten their baggage or you have lightened yours somehow. Mm. But let's take it from there. These are some of the issues huh, mm. we're seeing. As a consequence of following As the world's con- plan. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we use the word incompatibility. Some, when some time ago, and I believe that um, no, we're not born compatible to each other. Nobody is compatible. It's something that we have to work on, on being compatible. And like we keep saying, you know, before we were married, when you know, when we were dating, we were courting, 
we were very compatible. That's, you know, <laughs> all of a sudden. All of a sudden, yes. And, and, and I think maybe that is God's way of tricking us also, you know. This is the, the girl that's going to complete you and fulfill you, and the, and the guy's going to complete me and fulfill me and make me happy, happily ever, ever after. But, you know, if we, we... The only thing is, during courtship, it worked. It worked, yes. Yeah. I think it worked too, you know, because we used to spend time, time. talking That's to what each you were other. Doing. We invested mm -hmm. every moment that we could, you know. We couldn't wait to see each other, you know. It was just like, you know, every, every little, every little moment we would be loved yeah. with each other. And it was always after taking care of our responsibilities that we otherwise had. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we, we were messing up the priority. Yeah. We knew what we had to do as individuals and we did our best to get those done well and quickly so we could so spend as much time. Strange. So the priority was always, was always right there. in courtship. Uh -huh. yeah. so. but, that's, you know, but then again, you said, we said we were talking about taking each other for granted, which, which, which happens in mm -hmm. any, mm -hmm. you know, the more familiar you become with somebody, the more maybe you relax and the more, you know, um, you don't put in that same energy that you used to put in before. And one of the things I noticed that um, I think about Adam and Eve, mm -hmm. when, um, when Eve, when God asked Eve, why, you know, he asked Adam and Eve, why did they disobey him? And Eve said, well, the devil made me do it. And then when he went to Adam and asked Adam, why did you disobey me? And Adam said, the, the woman made me do it. The, the woman, woman you, that you made, made you gave me. Gave me. You know, yeah, even the woman so that you God, God you're, you're the blame. You're the blame. <laughs> God's the God, yeah, he's you, blame. you gave me this incompatible woman. That I have to, <laughs> you gave her to me. You made her and her to me. She, she's my, as it says in scripture, um, God gave Adam and Eve as Eve gave Eve to Adam as his suitable partner. So oh, God, got, go. God got the blame. Mm -hmm. So we are suitable, even though maybe we, we're having some, some problems um, getting to know each other and getting to, to live God's plan. It's, 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 it's really such an exciting and worthwhile journey mm -hmm. that it, it, it's, it's worth the investment. You know, um, anything that's good, we have to invest in. But um, so I think as, as wives, as wives, I think we need to look into ourselves and stop blaming our husbands for making us unhappy. Or, you know, we say, it's because of you, I got angry. Because of you, I'm lonely. Because of you, I'm this, I'm that. And we keep blaming each other, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I do believe that, um, that we need to look into ourselves, self-examination and, and listen to what God is saying and, and investing in each other. Yeah. You know what's comical? What you said. You know, we're getting to know each other. Only after 49 years of yes, marriage. Exactly. <laughs> Eternity. <laughs> Only after 49 years of marriage. Okay. But here, here are some other consequences of following the world's plan, being tricked. Mm -hmm. So why do spouses argue without even trying? Hmm. And have the hardest time making up. They lie in bed, angry, frustrated, and sleepless. <laughs> <laughs> Why are most wives hardly ever ready for sex, but always ready to find fault? You guilty. should be reading this, by the way. Guilty, yeah, yeah, yeah. guilty, well, anyway. guilty. But, but I, I put it out, you agree. So we're, we're, we're on the same You're page. You're okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> and why do most husbands show interest only when looking for sex mm -hmm. and quickly lose interest when sex is over? Mm -hmm. Guilty, guilty. Guilty, guilty. <laughs> <laughs> Why do husbands feel they have to protect their privacy by hiding their cell phones from their wives? You know, I, I, I now have a password, is what I'm saying. Yeah. And why do wives feel so insecure in the relationship? Why do many promising couples separate or divorce soon after marriage or later when the children are grown up? Why is incompatibility becoming the new breakup buzzword? We are just not made for each other. Period. Who's made for each other? <laughs> In a family. And, and so, look, I deserve <laughs> to find somebody else, and my dear wife deserves to find somebody else. 
The only thing is that somebody else they say last about a few years. <laughs> <laughs> It's not long. If and you're about right, no, this well, it's, is not working. It's not what I want yeah. it either. Let's move every, on. Every time the relationship gets shorter and shorter. Shorter, shorter right? yeah. Okay. But uh, it, like you said, the uh, incompatibility, the word, you just spoke so much on that. Yeah. Huh? Who's compatible? Like I said, even in a family, brothers and sisters from the same parents, the same, you know, oh, yeah. genetic, just, they're not compatible yeah. with even each other. Yeah, always digging, fight. always yes, digging at each other. Or so even parents okay. and children. Are not compatible sometimes because they're again on different pages <laughs> altogether. Different. Yeah. So who's compatible? That and and so it's back to God's grace through the the sacraments. And it doesn't. I mean, it could be through Christ, Christy, other Christians through their way of receiving having God first. Let's mm. put it that way: having uh, God first yeah. in their relationship. Right. That's going to give them the graces to do everything mm -hmm. we're talking about. But like I had mentioned also that um, when it came in, that no-fault divorce back mm -hmm. in the 70s. So now, oh, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. Mm -hmm. Just go right ahead if you don't think you can make yeah. it. There's no, no animosity fault. between us. No. We are the best of friends. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and at least I come in the movies, you know, after the divorce, they become the best, best of, of friends. friends. <laughs> yes. Why couldn't it's they? It's incredible. <laughs> yeah. Until, yeah. until I, heard, I saw or heard a very sad show of chil adult children of divorced people. Mm. And uh, their stories, as adults, not as little young kids now, yeah. you know, re reliving the memories of their divorced parents mm -hmm. and what they went through. Yeah. And when you read those stories, you see the damage that divorce does, oh, yeah. does to, to, yeah. to the family, to each other, but especially mm -hmm. to the children. I, I just want to emphasize something. Just like what you said, you know, sin disrupted that connecting link with God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, an intimate relationship with God restores that connecting link, not only with God, but with our spouse. Mm -hmm. So the marriage becomes more exciting when we have an intimate relationship with God, it's not like God says, look man, this is all about obedience now, and <laughs> shackles, and you can't do this, and you can't do this, and my God, the only reason I'm in this marriage is because I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. No, that's all, you know, the purpose of marriage is not to get divorced. No, the purpose of marriage is to have such an exciting, intimate relationship, as our sacramental side, God-centered, that other people look at us and say, I want the God you serve. Yeah. That's it. I, I see yeah. something. And that, that's, that's the whole intercessory aspect of marriage as it is of life. Mm -hmm. I really believe that, and it's allowed by, by my scripture, that after sin and Jesus died for us, we're all invited in. And it's, inviting is a kind word. We're all, mm -hmm. in a sense, as part of our Christian duty, required to be interceding for others. Yes. But the beautiful thing about God is he's saying, look, the love I'm going to bless, the love and intimacy I'm going to bless your marriage with, guess what? You're going to experience it in marriage. It's not just going to go a flow through, you know, I'm a funnel, boom, it's in and out without, I even, no, you're going to experience that love and intimacy. And that is what's going to draw others back to God, to redemption, whatever, you know, it's, it's we serve a wonderful God, mm -hmm. that, that's all we could say. If, if, if we'd only give ourselves a time of day to find that out and believe it, and give God a chance, mm -hmm. is what we're saying. Give God a chance that you hear that, and okay. this is where we do it. And don't look at it as this big, thick book. I have a tiny little New Testament book. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't carry it this thing around. And um, just sit there, just, you just can open anywhere, any of the Gospels. And, and, or you can go specifically to what we, can, what we do as Catholics is we follow it according to the Mass. Right. And, and which, is, which is beautiful because I always think that the readings, the, the um, readings and the Gospel of that day, so just pick today, in every Catholic church throughout the world, I was going to say China first. I'm not sure about China, but <laughs> with what's happening over there. But um, in every part of the world, Australia, um, let's go extremes, the United States, uh, down south, tip of Brazil, up north, in every Catholic church, the same readings are being read mm. throughout. Huh? 
as opposed to some of those wonderful shows that come on with speakers, but they just pick up the Bible and can pick anywhere. But for us in the Catholic Church, we follow a cycle, A, B, C, two years, one year in, one year out sort of thing. So we're getting his word constantly, constantly, yeah, the, if we're following it. The word, you know? the word of God really nourishes us mm -hmm. individually as a couple. And we have found that out. Stanley and I, we've been, um, we've been using the same thing you're talking about, the, 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 the gospel for the, for the week, with the, the, the three readings. Mm -hmm. We read it, I read, and he reads, and then we just talk about it, we mm -hmm. share. Gotcha. And that is, you know, we're, it's, you know, so it, it's hard to just pray words, but when you could pray God's word, mm -hmm. that is the ultimate. And at the same time, you're being fed, you're being mm -hmm. nourished, you're being, um, it, it, it's you all know. praying as a couple. No. And we've yes. only recently started, mm -hmm. but you know what's been carrying us? We have, we have individually, we have a really, really good prayer life. Maureen mm -hmm. has a really good prayer life. I'm a really good prayer, and that keeps us going. Keeps going. But I think we are now beginning to experience the pinnacle, mm -hmm. where as a couple now, we are looking to go as a couple to intimacy with God. Mm -hmm. And oh my, it, it, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's a big it's difference. It's a, a different level Something yeah. we should have done a long time yeah. ago. But For, it's, it's 49 not, years ago. It's, it's, it's not easy. No, it's not no, easy. No, it's, no. it's again, mm -hmm. that decision to invest in intimacy, which is not easy. It's this very thing we want, but it's, uh, but it's, it's the most difficult thing to do, unfortunately. You yeah, we, we, used to, we used to pray the rosary together, sure. or we say prayer before meals, or prayer before certain mm -hmm. situations. Mm -hmm. To actually spend time sitting mm -hmm. with God's word mm -hmm. is what Stan is talking about. It's together. It's, together. together is the together. pinnacle, mm -hmm. because yeah. We're being fed by, yeah. by God himself. And, and, and mm -hmm. what it does that illuminates our sign, because sacrament to me essentially is sign. Mm -hmm. It illuminates our sign, and we become much more effective in living out God's design marriage. for marriage, which is, again, intercessory, mm -hmm. you know, intercessory. This okay. is a God that talks about joy. Help me here. <laughs> Okay, we're, we're wrapping up, and we'd have absolutely no time to get into it. But something else, I, I, as you're talking about prayer, that Lexia Divina, mm -hmm. and um, again, how to read it. Maybe we can touch on that in our next session, okay, yes, how sure. to read the Bible. But the part I like is I don't even go, you know, the four steps, read, then meditate. You read a, read a, a verse, you meditate on it. Um, what's the third one? And then you share, share, okay. share what is God saying to me personally mm -hmm. from his word. So we, so, but, so we apply God's word, word to our lives. To your own, to our own life. lives. But what had hit me, and, I, and I've read many Lexia Divina pamphlets or whatever, the one that CD you loaned me on from Tim Gray, when he says, when, you're, when you read it, you know, because you're going to go into, you're going to close the book and you're going to talk to God now. But that now you have a topic, you know, two people, yeah. mm -hmm. when you come together, if you're not, mm -hmm. if you're strangers, you don't, mm -hmm. somebody has to come mm -hmm. up with a topic. You know, how right. are the kids? Yes. Or how is work? Yeah. So then we can go from there. With God, yes. you get the topic. topic right Whatever it is, it might not be your topic for the day. You can yeah. still give God your, your issues. Mm -hmm. we don't, he doesn't mind that at all. But you have something to now close the book yeah. and talk about. And exactly. I, that hit me, and I, I yeah. love it. I do and, that. And the great yes. benefit as a couple is that it's focused on just the two of us. Yes. It's not kids, it's not the job, it's not the in-laws or the challenges or what. It's just the two of us. So it's creating intimacy, even though we may not be on the same page yet. Mm -hmm. You know, we're exposing ourselves to God, pointing out, hey, you know, maybe you need to change this or change. Mm -hmm. Because God is the changer. He's the initiator of change. You know, we wouldn't accept any kind of advice or suggestion that we should change from anybody. I know what else. Spouse, <laughs> but from God, through the relationship, I'll say, yeah, yeah. And then, of course, that overflows into the relationship. And then the change, a lot of and the change may not be exactly the same way yes. or the same time. Uh -huh. And we need to respect okay. that. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. You know, yeah. we need to respect that God works with each person individually yeah. and as a couple. In a, in a funny way, Father Castillo, my wife, Uncle Monsignor, used to say, we are all like popcorn. We all pop at different, at different times. Time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. We'll end 
end on that note, <laughs> viewers. You hear that? We're all like popcorn. Pop we pop at different times. But I am encouraging you to delve into to God's word, into Jesus' word. Believe me, we, what ignorance of the Bible is ignorance of Jesus. And we do not want to be ignorant of him who has made this beautiful gift of marriage. We end with a prayer. Stanley and Maureen will mm -hmm. pray yeah, together. Prayer. Mm -hmm. oh, where is the prayer? Okay, right here. Okay, our, pr our prayer today is from Isaiah 40. Oh, okay, nice. 20, 31. And in this prayer, we have encouragement from God who can fill us up with love for our spouse. So it starts, do you know? Have you heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. Mm. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow weak. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. And Our Lady of Fatima, pray for us. So you go out and soar on the wings of eagle. mm -hmm. eagles. Thank you, viewers. Thank you for being here with us. Um, we certainly enjoyed this session, didn't we? Maureen, Stanley, thank you so much for Pleasure. enlightening us on all these. I mean, just looking at it, it might be words, but they just come to life as we go. We, we all sit and talk about it. So thank you, viewers. Come back next week, and we'll continue on this, um, on this session. Thank you to Mark and Salvador, our cameramen. And, um, we, we, as I said before, at the end of each show, we'll give you a little reading to read or a question for discussion. Give it a chance. See if you can answer some. Just reflect on it and see if that can bring you a, a better understanding of what we are presenting here to you. I am Mary Beth Maestre. Thank you so much for tuning in.